Hello, my fellow Gadotians. I am Will Nations, commonly known as Will Nations Dev in the Godot Engine community. You can find me on Reddit, Discord, and GitHub with that name. Uh, I am here today to announce a new uh, video series that I am planning to work on. Um, I've seen many different series on YouTube and in the official documentation that cover topics like how to use Godot Engine, how to build tools with it, how to uh, use Git with GitHub, and then how to clone the Godot Engine repository and build it. Um, I've seen things about how to add C++ modules to the engine. But one thing in particular that I have not seen is a kind of step-by-step -step walkthrough of um, the engine source code on a kind of, well, more on a topic topical basis. Um, no one's really kind of spent a lot of time digging into the engine internals and showing it to people. And I think because of that, a lot of people um, on the scripting side of things or who just aren't very familiar with C++ as a language see everything as this like foreboding mass of super complicated stuff that's way beyond them. And I'm here to tell you today that that is really not the case. If you if you spend a little bit of time learning the syntax and concepts of programming and C++ specifically, um, you you can get to a state where you can at least read the code and understand it. And that will go a long way towards helping you to better diagnose what's going on in your code, better understanding how Godot Engine works, um, and, and that knowledge helps inform your own work as a programmer or, or just as a, any game developer who, even if you're not especially experienced with programming. So I want to take an opportunity to kind of dive into a video series that walks through the source code. Um, some of the topics that I'm considering including uh, in this are um, the actual organization of the repository itself. Um, digging into the object class and uh, how it works, because many of the classes that are used in the engine derive from the object class. We'll dive into the low-level server system that examines um, or that, that powers the rendering and the physics and the audio and, and soon to be the navigation and display systems for like the different Godot windows. Um, I myself am not terribly experienced with the rendering or physics or audio, like actual details, but I, we'll, we'll see uh, how I do. Um, I don't claim to be an expert on these game development topics. I spend most of my time in web development, so. Um, we'll also touch on how the scripting API actually works, uh, how the scripting languages operate, um, how different languages kind of plug into Godot's internal systems, and then how the internal um, systems within Godot um, expose things to the scripting API and register things. Um, and that's actually the reflection topic that you see uh, on the screen there. Um, we're also going to touch on the variant class, which is kind of the piece of glue that kind of keeps everything melded together and allows it all to communicate. Um, and then there, we'll also go over some of the details of the main loop, um, how Godot actually gets started, where it pulls information from, uh, in what order things actually get booted up, and how the iteration loop of the um, engine actually processes like each of the steps that it goes through and which systems occur in what or order. Um, and then finally, I have plans to look through the editor code um, and kind of give people an overall view of like when they're actually inside the Godot editor, uh, how are the various um, pieces of it arranged, um, which will help you to better understand um, how to manipulate the editor with the edit with an editor editor plugin script of some kind, or if you wanted to know like, oh, I can't really get to this with an editor plugin. How do I modify this or or expose access to it um, for an editor plugin? Then you can kind of look at the editor source code and get a better idea of what you can do. Um, if you have other topics that you're interested in and which I might actually be able to help with, then uh, feel free to comment them in the comment section of the video and I'll tell you what I think, whether I can approach that topic. 
Um, and and if I can't do it, I'm sure we can. You know, maybe someone else can come forward and make a video ex explaining the topic in more detail. Um, so why am I doing this? Uh, mainly because the topic is severely underdocumented. I mean, there's there's a really great section of the docs, don't get me wrong, called the uh, engine development docs, um, which we will see here. And they have um, all these different toxic topics about the variant class, the object class, the various core types. Um, and you'll see like in here, it goes into more detail about the memory model and how things are allocated and and all the ramifications of it, the various containers you can use. There's so much great stuff in here, but it kind of picks at little pieces and tells you just about that small little bit in like very quickly. And it doesn't really go into a lot of detail about like how it relates to other pieces of the code base, when or why you would want to use it or the different parts. Uh, there's just, it's all kind of disparate, which to a veteran programmer, they usually already kind of know, you know, but for someone who's new to programming or just not as well versed with C++ specifically, they might not understand um, why these complex details are present. You know, like they might just be like, oh, you know, it's, a, you have a, an array in a dictionary and doesn't really get much more complicated than that. Well, actually, yeah, it does. And, there, and, and so I want to kind of look at the details of things. Um, so the other reason is because like they could you you know they could potentially modify the documentation and add in this additional information but if they did that it would bog down the experience for the veteran developers who are reading the engine documentation just to kind of get up to speed on what they need to know to work with the code base and that's really important for people who have that level of experience um, and creating high quality documentation that dives into the details of why you would do all these different things would be extremely difficult to do um, in a reliable way. So here's an unofficial version of going through things, um, a little bit more casual, hopefully. Um, and mainly because a lot of people who don't know about stuff are nervous and don't even like think that they might be good enough to comprehend what's going on in the engine. And I can tell you right now, you can. So, so I want to dispel those fears. Um, also, I already, I already mentioned, like they have all these other topics of video tutorials. I made this little template beforehand. Um, and so I wanna go over the new stuff. And as far as why I might be a satisfactory person to kind of look into this is I have some measure of experience in programming, four years in university, four years out of university in web development. Um, and I've done C++ all throughout that period in kind of on and off segments. Um, most of that time period has been spent with the Godot engine code base. Um, and so far I have 80 merged pull requests, um, which is a pretty decent number, but I mean, it's, it's not super amazing by like the other core contributors standards. I mean, like people, people are way more active in the engine than I am. So I'm kind of like on the fringe and I occasionally contribute when I can, as my time allows. Um, but I had an opportunity to make these videos and I saw a need. So I figured it was probably a good investment to make this. Um, so if you like, uh, the idea of the series, uh, just let me know if you had specific topics you want me to cover, uh, feel free to comment and, uh, keep an eye on the next video. Thanks.